guys, we are officially partnering with Holly and putting a Sniper EFI in our car to replace our carburetor. The first thing we needed to do was change our fuel system. So that meant a new fuel pump and fuel lines. Okay, so now it is time to get the new fuel pump in and the old sending unit out. I'm excited to replace it mainly because there might be a problem with our old sending unit. Our gas gauge has always been a little iffy. When we first got the car, it wasn't reading at all. And recently it's been reading like empty, even though we filled it up. And as you saw in like the previous episode, it was empty because it completely died on us. So I think we fixed our problems. What? So we are going to take our old sending unit out and test our gauge to see if it works. We obviously don't have um, a lot of gas left in our tank, but just to be safe and get whatever else is in the tank out, we're gonna drain it real quick before we start doing stuff. I've never done this, so I don't know what's happening. Well, I've already gotten transmission fluid on me. This is probably nothing. Sorry, I'm trying to get in the most position where I'm I know, it's kind of weird. Oh, oh my gosh, it's pouring out! Be careful, <laughs> Dad, it might splash you in the face! <laughs> ah! okay. Well, I guess I guess we don't need to do that. So that was super necessary and didn't waste our time at all. Um, just are... safety first. So now we are going to open the gas tank just to help vent out any vapors that could be in there. I haven't done this in so long. I know, right? I'm turning it the right way, right? You are. I need a screwdriver, screwdriver and a and a drench. Roger that. <laughs> Thank you. Screwdriver and a drench coming out. Check that wrench out and see if that uh that works for you. Sorry, give me a second. Yeah, that works. That's okay. All right. Uh huh. It's probably been on there for a while. You okay? I can, I can't even move it. Like it's not rubber anymore. Oh, maybe we just need to cut it. I want to bring you a razor. Ooh! Uh, I think it's impenetrable. Is it cutting through? I don't know if it's just those or not. Oh, this is just house. Wow, is the metal line all the way there? Yeah, the metal line stops here, and oh, then the yikes. other one so begins here. So they're real here. close. They're real close to each other. Oh, they're practically touching. Watch out for any uh, gas in there. You getting a little? Just a little. I wouldn't be surprised if you got at least a little. So kind of. Okay, that's cool. All right. I fixed it. Good job. They're separated. Oh, that sounded like moving. Yep. Awesome. It's dislodged. Good job. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, what's boring? I don't know what this looks like, so I don't know how to take it out. And I think that's the float. There you go. Whoop. Wow, this is really different. Yeah, very different from the... The other one. So that's the pickup right there. That's the little filter. The thing with the little yellow thing. That's yeah. what picks the gas up. And then the sending unit float is that guy right there. Yeah. All right. Should we test it? Sure. Okay. So if I sit in here, am I going to crush you? No. Okay. I hope not. Okay. All right. I am in. We have power. All right. Go for it. Lift that up. It should read full now. Eh. Nope. Um, no? No. I think uh, we've got a... Now? I think we've got a dead gauge, maybe. Come on! Yeah. Dang. Huh. Huh. So, obviously we have some problems with the gauge, but we will deal with that another time. For now, we are moving on to installing the new pump in the tank. Okay, so now it is time to get our fuel pump slash sending unit into the car. 
I'm quite happy about this. The whole thing is a little bit different to our original one and this won't fit in if we keep it on. So we just are going to unscrew it and then screw it back on when it's in there. You'll see how we do it. But we're gonna do that and we have to attach our hydromat, which is gonna be like the first filter that it goes through, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that we need to attach. Oh, I'm also really excited about this, which is the regulator. And this means that we don't have to send a return line all the way up to the front of the car, which I'm always happy if I don't have to run more lines up and down my car. It also means that we can use our tank as it is now and we don't have to cut into it or anything. So we can just like pop this in and go. All right. Will you catch Give me the down. screw? Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna get the old gasket off. All Are right. we gonna use the same ring clip thing? Or you're going to throw a new one. A ring clip? Oh no, we've got a brand new okay. one. Okay. Yeah, everything's new. So you got that pulled off. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, you got that little guy. Good. It should kind of yeah. do a little snap. Ring click. I think we'll hear the, uh, this guy. Like that sounds like it's on there. There. Uh -oh. No, no. Here, I'll. Uh, this end first. Like really? Uh-huh. Okay. Like that. Okay, it needs to stay here. Well, we have to get the float in first. Then we can screw everything together. Uh, but I need this to come out a little bit more because I can't get the float in unless this comes out a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, because the ground one was good. You ready for screws? So I'm going to take a little bit, I'm going to put it right there, I'm just going to put it right Um, Like it's in the tab, the best but it's, I can. But it's not inside this one, no. right? Okay, it's got to be inside there. Okay. If that's, oh wait, no, because it's not. Yeah, that should be snug. With the pump installed, we moved on to replacing the fuel lines. One of the things that Holly sent us were brand new rubber fuel lines that we thought we were gonna have to run from the back of the car all the way up to the front. But then we heard that it's a good idea to reuse your hard lines, so we thought, that's great. The only problem was that the rubber lines were 3 8 and the hard lines were 5 16 which is just a little bit smaller but we didn't want any leaks or anything bad to happen because we didn't replace it, so we had to completely bend a new fuel line. So after we got the hard line disconnected and taken out, it was time to get our bending and flaring tools back out and get started. All we have to do is flare the ends of our new line. Um, we tried this new thing where we zip tied at bends, which really helped um, keep it straight, I think, um, and keep it on the same plane. So I think it worked out pretty good. Um, so yeah, all we have to do is flare it and then we can get it in the car. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Good job. I don't know 
about y'all, but bending hard lines is one of my least favorite things to do. So I was not excited about this, but it ended up, tur it ended up turning out pretty well. So anyways, it was time to install a line and dad took one for the team and got under the car to install it. But we hit a snag. Oh, dang it. What did we do, dad? We just missed the... We were supposed to come up through here. Where's the clip that this guy was in? Uh, up at the top of the engine. Oh, oh no, wait, wait. <gasps> it's okay. It's okay? Yes, we did it right. Look. The joy on your face. <laughs> but definitely. But look, look where it came out. Did it come out right perfect? Look. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Oh yeah, that the tube came out just right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted it to, oh look, I wanted it to be able to clip right here. Oh, look at that. We were so happy we didn't have to re-bend the line and that it was finally in. After that, we plumbed in the fuel pump to the hard line and put in an inline fuel filter. Unfortunately, we were going quite fast and weren't paying attention to where the camera was, so you can't see most of it, but we did it. We were also able to plug in the, our fuel pump pigtail to get it wired in the trunk. So now the fuel pump and sending unit are connected to our new gas line. Um, so it's really nice to have that done. Yes. High five. Yes. So now we are going to um, get the wiring to the fuel pump and sending unit up into the trunk. And that's just so later we can wire it um, and we don't have to get back under the car. And snag that. Oh, wow. That's really I'm going to cool. have to go right here. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Yeah, just, we're probably gonna have to make that hole bigger probably any- Oh, actually, no, that hole's good. But it works. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that works. That's perfect. Um, keep it there real quick. I want to see if this yeah, grommet that I have you, works. Find you a grommet that works. Good! Is it coming through okay? Yep. Oh, yeah, hang on one sec. Oh, no! Uh, pull the grommet out. Yeah, we gotta- That's okay. Right there. Hey, okay, don't move it. Okay. I'm gonna zip tie it in place, okay? Don't touch it. One bad move and it'll all be gone. A lot easier when the seat's not there, huh? Yes. Nice. All right. Is that good or do we want a little bit more? There we go. Okay, girl. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I think that should do. So that is the sending unit connected and now we all only have to connect the power and the ground. So everything is connected now in the back. Um, it doesn't look very pretty right now, but we are eventually going to come back here, make sure all of our, not, our wiring is really nice and pretty and put away. But right now, this just makes it so that we can see if our car is running. So that's it. Our new fuel pump and fuel lines are installed. And next week, we are going to be putting in our Sniper EFI. I think it's really cool that we're taking an old car, reusing it, not letting it go to any dumps or scraps, but then we're also making it better by adding new technology that has recently come out and all that stuff to make Carl the most reliable car that he can be for me. So what I'm taking out of the garage is that it's great to be inspired by the past, but it's nice to take advantage of new technology. Thank you so much to Holly for sponsoring this episode, and I'm so excited to put in our new EFI. Thank you, as always, to my executive producer, Drew Carter, and if you would like to support me, go to my website at elliesgarage.com, where you can find my Patreon and my merch. I'll see you next time in the garage for our EFI conversion. There are so many times in the garage where you're like, we have to do this thing, it's completely necessary. And then there's no need for it. <laughs> Ellie, it's vital we drain the gas tank. We're gonna die if we don't. He did. Okay, Dad, let's drain the gas tank. Vital. <laughs> <laughs>